back to the studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. We're in the studio. This is episode five, but I'm just jumping on here because I'm doing this awesome painting of Proco. You might have seen this video already posted and you know, this episode might come out in the future when I'm filming. This video is definitely out before, but I just want to show you the setup, show you what I'm working on. I'm painting Proco. You should go check out this video if you haven't seen it. Let me turn this down a little looking super sexy, Mr. Handsome Stan. And I'm having quite a lot of trouble with this, uh, with this painting. It's like, you know, it's, it, it's actually a lot bigger of a portrait relative to the, the rest of these. Like if you actually just see the scale and the bigger scale, you know, there's room, more room for detail and then you can render more and I'm getting lost in all of the sauce. I also got some new super sexy paint brushes, some synthetic paint brushes for oil painting. But that's what we're doing right now. We're cranking it out. This whole setup is super jerry-rigged also in terms of this tripod's on a trash can. This tripod is just looking absolutely wacky and I have a lot of work to do to still dial this whole setup in. Actually, these lights right here, um, these are LED panels and those are eventually gonna go, they're gonna be hung from the ceiling in a frame I need to build that will be facing that studio, giving it really soft, wonderful, beautiful light. Um, that's like the last building portion I have to do. That's gonna be quite complicated and confusing. And it might not actually be for another week that I do that, you have to get an electrician in, but this, it will be in this episode, I think. Anyways, um, I just wanted to hop on and say what's up to just show you what I'm working with over here. Hopefully I'll figure that painting out. I got a few more days to finish it, but it is certainly challenging and I'm just hanging out. I'm actually gonna spend the night in the studio for the first time. I've been spending, I've been sleeping at my buddy's house just on the couch for the last two kind of weeks during this transitional period because I haven't found a place to live myself, an apartment, and it's not terrible. And I go back to Connecticut every once in a while to sleep in my bed but this couch is fine, it will do. We'll see how it goes, but um, yeah, it's nice to be in the studio all by myself, get some work done. This is the podcasting room, which we'll work on also in this episode. And also in this AC unit, actually under pigeons like live here. There's always pigeons around. Pigeons around. I witnessed this like crazy pigeon fight that I got on film. It was pretty, pretty wackadoodle. But, uh, you know, just getting the barons down, spending time in the studio, just grinding. I'm just sleeping here just so I can get more work done, wake up tomorrow, be here instead of commuting like 30 minutes. And there's just always things to do, meetings and just finishing this painting. It's been a crazy couple weeks. Um, and again, this is all, I'm in the past right now with this episode five. But I guess that's how we're introing it. And that's what I wanted to say. But lots of work to be done in this episode, so let's begin. It's a new day. It's actually kind of rainy out, not as hot, which is nice. We finished up this kind of rack, which is just more wonderful storage. It took way longer than I thought, actually. And um, we actually also just finished a live streaming of painting. I did this painting of a patron, which is actually a really uns unsuccessful painting. This is um, Pierce right here. He's a, he's a homie on Patreon, and I asked people on Patreon to submit some, uh, uh, some, some portraits for me to paint, and I did like three hours. I love going live. Usually it's only for Patreon, people who you know use Patreon, but I wanted to do it public. Um, so it was on YouTube, maybe some of you saw it. Really unsuccessful portrait though, which is sad, but it just, you know, it happens and I'm not, you know, I'm not here to say I could do better, I know I can, but it happens and it just makes me hungry to paint again. And I'm actually right now, um, it's part of like the Proco week still, you know, like talking about Proco, but he's- I definitely want something different. 
he's streaming right now, and he's doing these wonderful color studies, which is just like making me feel even worse about my uh, three-hour portrait, but it just makes me hungry to paint even more. So that's good drive and fuel for the future, but we still have to, we have to set up the studio, and we have a lot of work to do. So what I'm gonna do is keep cleaning up, and then we're gonna work on the podcast studio, build these light fixtures, hopefully I can get an electrician in, um, but just more organizing and building stuff, so let's keep on going. Before we continue, we gotta thank our sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes ranging from entrepreneurial disciplines, photo, film, painting, everything in between, and it's taught by the leading professionals in all of those disciplines. You've heard me say it before, I love Skillshare. They're an awesome sponsor for the channel. I think it's really applicable for people watching my videos. You know, the whole UI interface, class, assignment, you know, the curriculum that they work with online on Skillshare is just curated to learn. And whether you're a newbie looking for a new creative hobby or you're a career professional looking to dive it deeper, Skillshare has classes for every type of person. A class I love and continue to recommend is Mastering Illustration by the homie Jazza. It's kind of like a fundamental course, everything to do with illustration, color, it's great. And you really can't beat Skillshare's price compared to in-person classes, you know, less than $10 a month with their annual membership. It's just a really great deal. It's a really great opportunity. And for the first 1,000 people that click this video, you'll get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. It's really great. Again, the people watching my videos. Thanks, Skillshare. For sponsor the video, let's work on the podcast studio. So we got this big ladder, this podcast room, and I gotta mess with these lights some more because we're kind of redoing this whole setup just slightly. Oh, I'm so strong. I. Oh, wow. Okay, so. All right, so this is all a mess, but this is actually going to be the way that the, from the camera of the podcast, we're going to shoot this direction. The little test I did, we were just shooting that from here to there, just as a test. This is all going to be, ooh, this is all going to be moved around. But this light specifically, this is a big light. This is a Godox SL5 or 150, basically. That's the wattage, 150 watts. There's like a 60 watt, I think there's a 200. This is a bunch of light, plenty of light. Now what do I need to do here? This is a light dome also from Aperture. Um, I think I should put a reflector in here. Obviously this material is reflective, but there's this other reflector. So this other reflector that's kind of like a cone, I think that just increases the light output just by concentrating and reflecting it. If you look at like big productions for like TV shows or other big podcasters, you know, there is a lot of lights more than the average person would maybe think. It's because light is so important, it helps the camera be more crisp because the more light you have, you know, the higher your aperture could be, which means it's just a little more crisper. It's a little more in focus, just slightly, but always more light is better than the opposite, less light. And also the blinds over here, I'll shut all the way so we can control the light scenario just a little more. This is gonna be like the only big key light and then maybe there'll be some accent, just fun things in the background. But so I just, I'm trying to make this as bright as possible. And I just don't even know. The fudge. Whoa. I need to read some directions. Oh, so maybe I don't even need this. I guess this is not for soft boxes and I had it right the first time, but that I could switch up some of the, uh, the diffusing light. All right, so we'll mess with that. Let's just try this again. Whoa, that's cool. Goes just right there. 
not too shabby. Holy crap. All right, now the actual important thing is changing the direction. So I also want to like lower it. So I'm going to get some chain to lower it. This chain has a capacity of 90 pounds, which I think is just more than enough. I mean, okay, jeez. Uh. Okay. okay. I know it's facing sort of to the right. All right, I'm gonna tweak something, one more thing. Oh yeah, just like that. I think it could be. Oh yeah. Because the majority of conversations are gonna be in this corner. One, me and another person. There will be three, maybe even four. But so it's kind of centered around could be pulled a little more. Well, ooh, you know, that's light. All right, so. I just got back from the urgent care because I sliced my finger off. The corner of my finger. Literally, I was, I was trying to cut this big mural just a couple inches because it was a little too long. I was rushing uh, and just sliced the corner of my nail and finger right off. I'll put a picture up right here. If you don't like blood and gore, don't look, but I just thought I'd show you the, the evidence of the wound. Not smart. I'll survive. It's more annoying than anything. I have all this work to do in the studio. I have a big podcast with my homie Dean tomorrow. That's why I'm trying to organize all of this. And it just throws a nice little wrench in all of the work because he can't really use this. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's just like, I literally use X-Acto blades and Ulta knives almost every day of my life. And it's just standard that I got cut. But it's a good lesson to remember that these things are pretty sharp. Just slice through like butter. That's hilarious. And it's so standard also that like the one time I'm not filming just because I wanted to cut this really quick. Literally, I film like everything. I didn't even get that on camera. So just a wonderful evening now. Ugh. But I'm going to finish this and we'll set that up. Maybe I'll just come in early tomorrow. But that's so funny that that just happened. Um, pretty annoying, honestly, for the next 10 days, just have this little sucker on. Didn't need stitches, but standard. Accident prone. Well, that sort of works, right? Bring this left side up just a touch. You can still get things done with a bum finger, huh? I need to update you with what really transpired in the last 24 hours after I cut my finger, which is doing way better. I'm just wearing this bandage because I'm doing some work in the studio. It's actually been six days since that happened. Right after I cut my finger, went to the walk-in, hung that up, 
I had the podcast the next day. It was Tuesday. I had a podcast scheduled for Wednesday with the homie Dean. I went home that night, had a panini from a bodega. Next morning, Wednesday, woke up, had terrible food poisoning. All day spewing out my butt. If you have gotten food poisoning, you know how terrible it is. All day Wednesday, even into Thursday, like couldn't get out of bed, the couch. It was terrible. I had to cancel the podcast with Dean, the first one, and he was only in Brooklyn for like a week. Um, I had to cancel on Chris, the podcast producer who was helping me the first day. Um, and it was just a shizen show and just terrible. And yeah, that's why it was the worst 24 hours of my life. And I had all this planned and prepared and organized and it just fell through. Thank goodness we rescheduled for Friday, um, which we did a podcast. It was just kind of like last few days here, Dean, and we did it. It was a wonderful time. What's up? Oh, you could just chuck all that. Setting up for the first podcast, podcast numero uno. With the sliced finger. What do you think, Dean? Want to move in with me? <laughs> move in, yeah. Move in, yeah. Next time you come, yeah. it will be uh, labeled. I want it to be that for everybody. But first of all, Dean's an oil painter. He's a painter. He's an artist. We're the same age, right? I'm 20 28. Okay, I'm 26. You're okay, older. Close. All right, we're pretty much the same age. All right, young man. <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> but um, and the podcast still has more tweaking to do. I'm not gonna release any of the shows. Like I'm trying to really build this show out. This is like the biggest new venture in the studio is the podcast venture, you can say. And I'm really planning on giving it like two full years. That's the kind of goal. I'm giving myself two years to like really establish, hopefully, a, a entertaining, successful, you know, formula of a show. Um, and so we're obviously in the we stages, the genesis of this whole idea. And we're, I'm working out the kinks and everything. I'm not going to probably release any shows or conversations with people till like August, maybe end of August. Um, so stay tuned for that. But it's really exciting. But I'm going to update you as things go on. And even that first whole podcast, which went successful and I recorded a whole, you know, 90 minute, two hour podcast with Dean. There's things within... The setup, the all the equipment, even the the studio with the lighting that I worked so hard on to organize, um, that I need to fix and improve. So we'll keep on improving that, and I really enjoy all of that stuff. Hopefully, you guys like learning about that. But you know, I'm I'm a firm believer of this idea that you need some sort of model, you need some sort of framework to then um, iterize, if that's a word, and improve. So you can't just do something the first time and think it's great. You kind of just have to build something use it and then only through you know it being established can you um, improve it so we put the studio together what i thought would work the equipment the lighting blah 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 the um you know video and and you know after even the first one i already see things that i need to improve and the improvement will only increase after using and doing it more just like painting just like anything so i'm excited to keep tweaking that whole system but let's build some lights now we got to build the framework of the lights. More building. Oy! LED panels. Let's pop these suckers open. Be careful with the exacto blade. Yes. These are really sexy, honestly. Look at how thin these are. Holy crikey. This is one panel. Where do I put it? So yeah, the good thing about these is, is obviously it's a square. They're two by four feet, which equals you know, a four by four square. They kind of have this one inch border around, which actually works out for me because they're gonna be just like laying flat on a, um, on a frame, pointing down and gravity will kind of keep them in place. I mean, I could screw them in if I want. Um, but, so I'm just gonna build a, like a, a four by four box thin thing to just slide them in and they'll hang from chains. Does that make sense? I have a pretty good plan. and I'm also basing this all off just the quick glimpses you see from Proco and, and uh, Stephen Bauman's studio. So 
So I'm actually pretty surprised I've gotten to this point without screwing up. It kind of like fits in this frame I made. There's definitely way more challenges, but like from this point, we're chilling. Spilled my paintbrushes over here also. Super. All right, so that's it. I can take, ay, 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 I could take this out. Now I actually want to take the panels out because I just wanted the measurements so they fit perfectly. Feeling good. And so this is the frame. It's all pretty good, it's solid. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna I had that divider. Oh, I should have marked a freaking spot. All right, guys, so I glued up this part you know, this divider and they slide in here, real wonderful. But I'm gonna end the vlog here because it's just gonna be like a 30 minute video. I have no idea. You could see the absolute mess we made over here. Love it, but I'm kind of sick of this sawdust. So hopefully soon we can stop building and clean everything up. Also, you could see all these chairs and everything. I've taken most of the stuff out because I'm gonna paint this wall and we're gonna really switch up this room and if you guess what color in the comments, I'll heart it and I love you forever. So guess what color I'm gonna paint just that wall. I'm also gonna be doing some modifications to this table, which is like the podcasting table. Anyways, bunch of excited stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy these. I really like making these or just at least sharing the journey. I know they're kind of longer, slower videos and I got some really intensely awesome epic projects Sort of like that, big compositional paintings, planned, uh, but you know, just a lot of work to set everything up. Never ending. All right, see you in the next video.